Good evening and a warm welcome to Be Calm, Be Kind, Be Happy. We'd like to request you all to take your seats as this evening's event is about to begin. Step away for the next few hours. Put down your phones. You might even dare yourselves to turn them off and be present. Photography and videoing of any of tonight's event are strictly prohibited. However, you will find that we have our own photographers and cameramen capturing every moment for you to enjoy at a later date. Now, sit comfortably, take a moment to breathe, and enjoy the experience. Oh, Namah Shivaya. 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 Oh, Namah Sh
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great honor to welcome you to tonight's event. Welcome to all of you here in the Lowry Theatre, named after a famous local artist, but a particular welcome to all those who are watching us from around the world as this event is being live streamed. Tonight, we are in the city of Salford, which is right alongside the city of Manchester. Just down the road, we have the world famous football ground of Manchester United. Uh, and just across the road, the Old Trafford Cricket Ground, where again, so many people, particularly in India, are watching with the Cricket World Cup. Here in Manchester, in Greater Manchester, we are so proud uh, that people have come here from all around the world to settle, to work, to study. People of all different backgrounds and cultures and religions. And we have set up a particular charity called We Stand Together to promote that community cohesion and diversity uh, and for us to be able to stand together against those who promote hatred. And part of that is to spread understanding and the great opportunity to learn about other cultures and other philosophies. So here in Manchester, although we love our Indian food and we have the famous Curry Mile, a road full of Indian restaurants, there is growing interest in Indian art, in Indian culture, but particularly in this philosophy of be calm, be kind, be happy. This event is, is arranged and organized by Brahma Kumaris. And they have a special center here in Manchester called Inner Space. And that's how I got to hear about this event. It's a very special building in the center of Manchester, which does so much to spread understanding, particularly of the philosophy of, of meditation and how people can find inner peace. And of course, that is so relevant today when we all live such busy lives. We have 24 hour news, 24 hour drinking, 24 hour eating, 24 hour shopping. Particularly here in a place like Manchester, it never stops. We all carry devices that bring emails and information to us 24 hours a day. But within that, we all struggle to find space. We know that despite this prosperity, particularly here in Britain, so many people suffer from mental illness. So many people struggle to sleep properly and to find that peace. We know so many of our young people don't see hope in the future. And so many people are trying to find a stronger inner meaning in life. So that is why tonight's event is so very, very important. And why so many people have been moved to listen to our speaker tonight. So I would say to you, please be prepared to be inspired, to be motivated. It's a great privilege for us to be here tonight. Please enjoy the evening. Of the many wonders that surround us in the natural world, one of the most intriguing and enduring mysteries is that of the transformation of the caterpillar from a chrysalis to a butterfly. Tired of its endless feasting, the caterpillar reaches a point where it can consume no more. Instead, it turns within and begins to imagine a very different reality. At the core of its being, profound changes are beginning to stir. It's a process I recognize within myself, as I too become still and sense the stirrings of an inner awakening. I too ask myself the question, who am I? What is my true potential? As I move from fear to freedom, from hopelessness to hope, I begin to take the first steps on my own journey of transformation. The story of the Brahma Kumaris. It was just such a calling which stirred in the heart of the founder of the Brahma Kumaris, Dada Lekraj, who soon became known as Brahma Baba. 
The impulse for change came as a result of a series of visions he received, in which he saw how the world itself was to undergo a process of profound transformation. The changes that came about in Brahmabhava as a result soon brought about changes in others too, who likewise were feeling the urge for something new. The small group that formed around him, mostly women, became known as the Daughters of Brahma, the Brahma Kumaris. When the call came for someone to come to the West and share the vision of the Brahma Kumaris, it was Daddy Janki who stepped forward. With nothing more than a change of clothes, she left India for the first time and boarded an aeroplane to London. She had practically no formal education behind her and didn't even speak any English. What she did have, however, was an unshakable faith and an unbreakable love for God. Daddy Janki stayed in London for the next 40 years, sharing the fruits of her faith, courage and honesty with many others inspiring them to connect with their own inner powers for self-transformation. Now, after more than 80 years of spiritual service and well into her hundreds herself, Daddy Janki is still the same powerhouse she ever was. And the exchange that you're having with others is creating something. Sister Genti has witnessed firsthand how, with Daddy's presence in London, the Brahma Kumaris has grown from an apartment in a small terraced house to a purpose-built facility, serving the whole of the UK, Europe and beyond. When I started on this journey, I wanted to see, was it possible for me to change characteristics that were negative and be able to transform myself into the original state of being that I knew was possible. And to my wonder and surprise, I discovered that that's what all this is about, that you can create the highest within yourself and allow that potential to emerge in a very practical way. And if one person can do it, well, so can many, many others also. The Brahma Kumaris was established in 1937 in pre-partitioned India. It now has a presence in 110 countries, through a network of over 4,500 centres and more than a million regular students worldwide. Soon after the establishment of the Brahma Kumaris in London and in 40 cities throughout the UK, meditation and retreat places were established throughout Europe. Today, more than 80 years later, it has grown into a worldwide spiritual organization and the largest of its kind to be led by women. Like the transforming cells of the chrysalis, which group together to form supportive clusters of new butterfly cells, the Brahma Kumaris has a global network of centers where spiritual support encourages innate potential to flourish. The spiritual organization invites people from all walks of life to come and learn the art of Raj Yoga meditation free of cost. Everyone, regardless of religion, race, social or economic status, is welcome to study the spiritual knowledge and meditation. Meditation helps the soul to see with a positive energy 
and sharing this positivity with others. Putting those positive qualities into practical actions and with self-transformation, hope is created that eventually the world will become a positive place to live. There is a purpose to the Brahma Kumaris being at the United Nations. And the purpose is to reaffirm faith in the dignity and worth of the human being. So the way we do this is that we bring to the table, we integrate into the programs of the United Nations, a spiritual trajectory of awareness, attitude, vision, action, as a subtle dynamic to transformation. Over the years, the activities of the Brahma Kumaris have diversified with a number of international events, including projects like Million Minutes of Peace, Global Cooperation for a Better World, Peace in the Park festivals, and programs for young people and emerging leaders, Choose, Change and Become, Spotlight Values and Om Cafe. The Brahmakumaris also work in partnership with several other international projects, including Living Values Education, Images and Voices of Hope, and Spirit of Humanity Forum, as well as participating in the international events on climate change. Wherever the Brahmakumari centers exist, they play a significant role in the community. Whether it's supporting people in the aftermath of a disaster, encouraging women to make positive changes to their lives, helping teenagers cope with the huge pressure of modern life, or just supporting individuals generally who are wanting to grow and change within themselves, we are there to help. Whenever we can, we are there to serve. Our lives and the changes we make to them are part of that process of change. Each small step affecting the whole. As the butterfly flaps its wings, the effects can be felt on the other side of the world. What we are witnessing in the world, as with the butterfly, is the splitting open of the old skin and the emergence of a new and transformed story for humanity. Like the emerging butterfly, there comes a time when we too are ready to unfold the wings of our own conscious awakening. Profoundly changed from the place where we began, we step into our full magnificence and splendor. And it's then that on our journey of transformation, we begin to truly fly. So to let you know who I am, my name is Sir Peter Fahey. Um, I was the Chief Constable of Greater Manchester, uh, and I got to hear about Brahma Kumaris and the wonderful Inner Space Centre here in Manchester when I invited them in to help our police officers not only deal with traumatic incidents, uh, but also to help them deal with such pressurised, busy lives and to find that inner space and that inner, inner peace. Now we move to the highlight of tonight's event, and this has only been possible by many people who have been involved in the organisation. And I want to thank uh, a wonderful dancer, Swati Rout. 
I want to thank all the production staff of this uh, amazing Lowry Theatre uh, and also the production staff from Brahma Kumaris from London, Leicester, India and Brazil. B.K. Shivani uh, arrived in London on June the 17th to start a European tour in which she'll visit 13 different cities, all connected to the International Day of Yoga. I happened to be in India last week uh, and saw the Prime Minister lead uh, huge numbers of people um, in, in yoga uh, practices, giving a wonderful national example. BK Shivani has been watched by many, many people, uh, millions of people around the world in her television series, Awakening, which has inspired so many to change their lives and help them to improve their leadership skills and be happier and more fulfilled. Her great power as a, an influencer, an inspirational speaker, was recognized by the government of India when last year on the International Day for Women, she was awarded India's highest civilian award for women, the Nari Shakti Woman of Power Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome B.K. Shivani. topic isn't it just saying the three words sounds so nice did you like the topic of the day today yes let's just say the three words and see what kind of a vibration it creates within us be calm now let's shift it to I am calm feel it see it now say it, I am calm, I am kind, I am happy. Is it true? Yes. Now we only need to add one more word to it. I am calm, I am kind, I am happy, always. All of us. Because each one of us is calm, kind, happy. But sometimes, sometimes we shift from calm to, shift from calm to, to, we shift from calm to anger, what else? See the spectrum of emotions. Calm is who I am, but sometimes I shift to turmoil. What else? Agitation. Agitation. Ah, irritation. But no more, then we'll shift the energy otherwise. <laughs> I shift from kind to being kind. I sometimes shift to Mean. Mm. Anyone here is ever mean? I shift from kind to selfish. I shift from kind to aggressive. At the top there, I shift from kind to I shift from happy to sad. Now, be kind, be calm, be happy. 
which one has to be done first? If I am calm, then I will be kind, then I will be happy. Or if I am happy, then I will be calm, then I will be kind. Or if I am kind, then I will be happy, then I will be calm. Which one will come first? There has to be an order, no? If I do this, then this will happen and then this will happen. So which out of these three feelings is going to come first? If I am calm, then it's easy to be kind? If I am kind, then I will be happy? It's reverse. Because it's actually not a straight line. Calm, kind, happy. It's actually a circle. Calm, kind, happy. If I'm happy, then I will be calm. If I'm calm, then I will be kind. If I'm kind, then I will be happy. But only if I'm happy, then I'm able to be calm. So it's not a line. It's a circle. Which means if I, if I create one of these three feelings, the other two will automatically happen. Let's take a moment of silence and see ourselves. What does this word mean for me in my life? Only look at your life, your people, your work, your current situations in life. And then fit in these three words into your scenarios of life today. Where is it that I am kind? Where is it that I need to be calm? Just scan through your life and fit in these three words there. And check. Check. Is there any place where I need to fit in this word now? Is there anyone with whom I need to be kind? See your behavior with people. And behavior would not just be in how we talk to them or what we do with them. How I think about people. Is there anyone I need to be kind towards, just in my thoughts. Look for at least one name towards whom I'm going to be kinder from today, just in my way of thinking about them. Raise your hands if you found a name for whom your thoughts need to shift towards being kind towards them. Being calm. Now find something in your life. Sometimes a scene which comes typically almost every day where my mind shifts towards a little hustle bustle disturbance and I need to fit in the word there being calm and see yourself doing it there any situation or person with whom I need to be happy. I need to be happy. Because it's all in my feelings, it's all in my thoughts. I'm going to choose it today, put in the word there today, and I am going to be that.
be happy with them as they are. Being happy with the situation as it is right now. I am calm, I am kind, I am happy. But today, I add one more scene where I need to be that. And as I only look at myself there, I can already start creating the feeling, what it means to be kind towards them, just in my thoughts. Words and behaviors will manifest just in how I think about them. Be kind. I'm calm, I'm kind, I'm happy, always. Being kind is our nature. Which act of yours would you label as kind? I am kind when, fill in the blank. I am kind when I fill in the blank. When do you call yourself kind? This is an act of kindness. I am kind when. Anyone? Hanji? When I am? When somebody is in need. Yeah, so what do I do which I can label as I am kind? Because I need to understand for myself, we need to understand what is kindness so that I can make it a more natural way of living and not just an act of kindness which is once in a while but kindness being my personality, kind always. So when someone is in need, I am kind means, what do I do? I? I help. I help by? I help by? By giving them what? I help by giving them what they need. Anyone? has been kind in the last one week? <laughs> this is not true. This is not true. Kindness is our nature. Is it possible to be kind always? No? Such a beautiful feeling. The word itself feels so nice. And we're talking, we're going through times when everybody's saying, the world needs to be kind. So for the world need to be kind, I need to be kind. No act of kindness in the last one week? Yes? And now just look at that scene. Someone needed something and I was there to give. What do you think people around you today, if you just tap somebody and say, what do you want in life? So what are the words you're going to hear from most people around you? What do people need in life today? They need happiness, very good. What else do people around us need? Peace, acha. And what else do people need? Love, very good. Now, we said, I am kind when I give what someone needs. Second, we are saying people around me need peace, love, happiness. 
So third line would mean, to be kind, all that I have to do is, all that I have to do is, give peace, love, happiness to everyone, always. So ready? So much silence. Oh, scary this silence. What happened? Not ready to give peace, love and happiness? Yes, ready to give peace, love, happiness. So kindness is not only in behavior. That someone needs food, I give them food. Someone needs wealth, I give them wealth. Someone stuck at work, I go and help them, I share with them. Kindness is not in just behavior. Someone is in emotional pain. Someone is feeling low. Someone is a victim of their own emotional behavioral pattern. They're just not being able to change. Someone is addicted to a substance, to a technology, to their own ways of thinking. There's a lot of pain around us. And the first person who needs that kindness is So you know the first name which is going to come on the list, who I have to be kind to? Very good. So when we say be kind, don't look for names outside first. The first person I need to be kind to is myself. Are there any moments during the day when I'm unkind to myself? What do I do which you can label I'm not kind to myself. When, I, when is it that I'm not kind to myself? When I'm in pain. So what do I do to not be kind to myself? Because I have to change. I'm going to shift to being kind to myself. Because unless I'm kind to myself, what can you give to people? What they need? But most important, what I have. Right? If someone needs wealth, they may need it, but I will not be able to be kind and give it to them unless I have it. So for me to be able to give to people, I need to have. You said people need peace, love and happiness. I want to give it to them. So for that, I need to have. To have it, I will need to first be kind to myself. What do I do during the day by which I am not kind to myself? Very good. I am very critical about myself. Self-criticism. You know, when people criticize us, how does it feel when someone criticizes us? How does it feel when someone criticizes us? It's very hurt, very painful. But people can criticize us only once in a while. And for a few minutes. And even then we have a choice how much to accept it and how much to just reject and say it's okay. It's about them. This is not who I am. But when I start criticizing myself, then I have to live with that criticizer. Thirty seconds, close your eyes, check. Is there anything, absolutely anything, which I criticize myself about? And note it down. Is there any thought? But I criticize myself. Noted. I need to shift from criticism to? Someone's made a mistake. So visualize the scene. Two people here. One has made a mistake. The other person is criticizing them. You as a detached observer can see the scene. And what do you think is the need of the hour? Shift from criticism to? Someone's made a mistake, the other person is criticizing them, 
and as a detached observer you see what's the feeling needed at that time the one who's made a mistake is emotionally down what do they need what do they need love support you know there are these steps here and while i was climbing up it was quite dark suppose i had missed a step and i fall down will you help will you help sure what would you do first pick me up check if there's a wound then nurse that wound that's one way of living the other way of living is stand there and say could you not see those steps <laughs> and could you not wait for the light did you have to climb up in the dark aankhe hai ya button hai dikha nahi would we do that to someone no because even if you did that at that moment your advice will not work for me because i am in pain when i am in pain i cannot understand anything till i am healed and that's when we say and been saying the same thing to them repeatedly they just don't seem to understand anything it's because they are in pain and we are giving them advice so what would we do first pick them up check if they are hurt nurse their wounds and once i'm absolutely fine in half a line you can say take care when you climb next time and most important is you don't even need to say that line to me because i know it myself people don't need advice people don't need advice everyone knows what's right for them what do they need what do they need pick them up pick them up give them unconditional love and support help them to heal themselves they will correct themselves next time it's easy to do that when someone falls physically now we have to do that when someone falls emotionally someone's made a mistake they know what they have done they're already in fear and guilt they are in pain and there we are telling them what's the right thing to do that's not the time it's time to be kind and who's the first person i need to be kind with so even if i make a mistake the first thing i have to do to myself is pick myself up first if i am emotionally in pain and then i start criticizing myself i'd probably have a wound which will not get healed for a lifetime if i am climbing up the step i miss a step i fall i twist my ankle and there you come with a stick and go tuck 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 i'd probably have a wound which will never get healed sometimes we carry emotional wounds for and if we don't heal them while in this body we carry that emotional wound with us into the next lifetime and the destiny of that child starts with an emotional wound and so it's very very important if we make a mistake if we fail if we don't achieve what we wanted if we face a rejection in a relationship if someone is not nice to me let the world not be nice to me i need only one person to be nice to me even if i fall on these steps and all of you just sit back and don't offer to help i need only one person to be strong that time me myself pick myself up i don't need to sit there and wait for people to come and help me i don't need to because people around us right now might not have the emotional strength to give to us they themselves are and because family and friends are so attached to us that if you see me fall you go 
Doesn't it happen? We are in more pain than the pain of the family member because we're so attached to them. So to expect them to emotionally support us is not possible sometimes because they are also in pain. And that's why if you notice people when in pain, they tell people around them, go out, leave me alone. And the person will say, but I want to sit with you. So please go out, leave me alone. Why do they want to be left alone? Why do they want to be left alone? Because the people sitting next to them are physically sitting next to them, but emotionally are in pain. And because I'm in pain, I don't want any more pain around me. And then I prefer to go and talk to a stranger. I prefer to go and talk to a stranger because the stranger radiates unconditional respect to me. They are not in pain and that is an act of kindness. Not being judgmental about the mistake they have made. Not creating pain and worrying for them what will happen to my child. Just being there stable radiates strength to the other person. This is kindness. But even if I don't find anyone around me giving that to me, then I will need to give it to, I need to give it to myself. So even if I've made a mistake, even if I've gone through a failure, even if I've gone through a rejection in a relationship, even if someone's been very, very mean to me, I only need to be nice to myself about how I talk to myself here. So when you put the list of names as to who needs your kindness, the first name, the first name, I have to be kind to myself because only then I am kind. It's like I have to earn myself and only then I am rich and then I give. I need to study myself, then only I am knowledgeable and then I can give knowledge to others. Similarly, I need to take care of myself, I have to be kind to myself, then I am kind and I radiate kindness. People will talk about us. People will say things which they believe is right. Just the other day, we were talking to a young brother and he says, why does the world put labels on us? Is it fair to people just to come and just put a label on us and then talk about us through that label? Can we stop the world from putting labels on us? No. Do they have the right to put a label on me? Do the people have a right to put a label on me? Someone can just walk up to you and say, you're very egoistic. I'm like, okay. And another person will walk up after five minutes and say, you're very humble. I say, thank you. And then you have to just pause and check. Five minutes back, one person says, you're very egoistic. Five minutes later, another person says, you're very humble. Which one out of these two am I? Am I egoistic or am I humble? Which one out of these two am I? One person walks up and says, you're a wonderful person. Another person walks up and says, I just don't want to live with you. One person comes up to say, I enjoy working with you. Another person comes up and says, I just can't work with you. Does that happen? Have you ever thought about it? I am the same person and some people like me. Some people just can't stand me. Some people love me and some people love to hate me. Simple. But I am the same person. Then why do people have such different opinions about me? Reason. 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 It's their perception based on? It's their perception based on? Their own sanskars, their nature, their mood. It's not even a permanent label. That label can change tomorrow. 
most important is they put their labels according to how we are with them. If you continue being a certain person's way, they tell you sit, you sit. They tell you stand, you stand. They tell you walk, you walk. They say you're such a wonderful person. <laughs> they love you. And then one day they say sit and you say no, I feel like standing. And they say sit. We say no, I want to stand. They say what ego? Finished. <laughs> Simple. So if I'm people's way, I'm very nice. But if I'm not their way, then very few people are able to put nice labels on me because the world wants people to be their way. And when I try very hard to be people's way, and then I'm his way and her way and her way and his way, and by the end of it, I've lost my own personality. And then at the end of it, I say, in spite of the fact that I did so much for everyone, they're still not happy with me. What more should I do for them? Why are they not happy with me in spite of me having done so much for them all my life? Because I was not happy while I was doing it. I was doing it only to please them. And when I do something to please people, I cannot be happy. I'm only doing, them, doing it to seek their approval. Please say I'm a nice person. Please like me. Please approve of me. And when I'm doing all this, seeking public approval, I'm not being kind to myself. I might get the approval of the world, but I will not be happy if I was not comfortable doing what I did. So being kind to ourselves is the most important thing if I need to be calm and happy. So why are put people putting different labels on me and how do I now live with these labels? What do I do? Because otherwise what's going to happen? When I get a nice label, I go. And when I get a not a very nice label, I go. And when I get a really mean label, I go. And the more I go like this, the more I stand in front of people and I'm ready to do anything to get a nice label. That is peer pressure. Peer pressure means doing something which the world wants you to do so that the world says you are a nice person and I use that line to feel good about myself. Self-esteem dependent on public approval is not being nice to ourselves. So when somebody puts their label on us or someone says something about us, I need to remember what they are saying about me is a reflection of, it's a reflection of their personality, their perspective about me, their mood today. It's all about them. I take what they're saying. You can take what they're saying, but don't take the energy of what they're saying. Can we do that? Take people's words, don't consume their energy. Hanji? Hard to accept what? I need to check, no, because somebody might be giving me very valuable feedback with an energy of criticism. Someone could be giving very, very, very valuable feedback, but it's given with an energy of criticism. Because we get affected by the energy of criticism, we miss the feedback. Because that energy of criticism hits me, I get depleted, I don't even retain what the feedback was about. I miss it all. It's like a gift. It's like a gift. You buy a very expensive diamond, Pack it up nicely, very expensive, very beautifully packed. Walk up to them and say, Tick. Hello. They won't even open it. Because it's not about the gift, which means it's not about the feedback, the advice, it's about the energy with which the advice is given. And you give someone one rose, but you give it with so much love. They'll keep it in their book and save it for one month. 
It's not about the advice, it's the energy with which the advice is given. So when someone is being critical and saying something about me, just remember, they are saying it with an energy of criticism because that criticism is their personality. They are not happy. And because they are not happy, I need to be kind to them. To be kind to them, I have to first not consume their criticism just by remembering it's not about me, it's about them. Bring one person on the screen of your mind and immediately fit the line. It's not about me, it's about them. Did you see someone? Look for only one. <laughs> Everything we have to do for one, otherwise it all gets very confusing. Because I'll miss my one minute and only looking for the people. This one, this one, no, this one a little more, this one a little and now. Only one name. Because we need to understand, these are the people who need our kindness. Anyone who is critical is very ha unhappy inside. They're very bitter inside. They just cannot be nice because they are unwell emotionally. They are the people who need my kindness. And for me to be able to radiate kindness to them, I have to first protect myself from their negative energy. And the easiest way to protect myself from their negative energy is immediately create the thought, this criticism is not about me, it's about them. For that, I will also need to do it when I get appreciation. This appreciation is not about me, it's about them, they are lovely people, so they are able to see goodness in me. In Hindi, it's a very beautiful line. Ninda stuti ek saman, stable in fame and defamation. It's like a pendulum. It's a pendulum. If I get swayed in appreciation, I will definitely get affected in criticism. If the pendulum goes this side, it will definitely go this side. But if I'm stable in appreciation, if I'm stable when I get appreciation, I will be untouched by criticism. And that's being kind to the self, radiating kindness to them. So if someone is being critical to us, please remember, they need our kindness. And just at that time create a thought, they are in pain. Don't consume the pain, check the line which they are saying. Suppose I have to go up to brother and say, is this the way of sitting? You don't even know how to sit. 800 people in this hall and this is the way you are sitting. Now, what I'm trying to say is very good for them. He needs to sit in a way which is good for his body. But the way I am saying it is not even going to allow him to take that because he consumes my pain, creates hurt, and when somebody creates hurt, advice doesn't work. So we need to practice this. Detach from the pain, take the advice. If you find it useful, accept it. If not, keep the gift. All gifts don't need to be used. We don't use all gifts, no? We don't use all gifts. Some we keep it in the cupboard, we might use it another time. Some we give back to people and say, thank you so much, but I don't need this. And some we gift to other people. <laughs> so, yeah, what's wrong? It was a nice piece of advice I shared with him. Sit straight, it's good for his spine. He says, yeah, I know, but I don't feel like. So he just goes and tells another person, sit straight, it's good for health. <laughs> Finished. So give your gift to somebody else. But don't consume that pain, that criticism. This is when we need to understand people around us need help. They need help. So ninda stuti, ninda stuti, ek saman. Appreciation, criticism, stable. Fame, defamation, stable. I need nothing from people. I need nothing from people, which means I'm not going to stand like this in front of people and say, approve of me, appreciate me, accept me. No. 
be literally seeking approval for almost everything that we are doing. Going for a party, open your wardrobe, select your dress, and just check what's the criteria of the thought inside while selecting the dress. Who should like my dress? Who should like my dress? So while I'm choosing the one which I'm going to wear, somewhere in the back of my mind is, people will like this and I choose that. If I do that, and then when I walk into the party, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Nobody's talking about it. I send vibrations of seeking, please like my dress. Still nobody seems to be talking about it. I spent a good amount on buying that dress. I chose that dress and yet I believe the world is supposed to like it. And when no one says anything about it, I start talking about their dress. At least the topic of the dress will come up and something they will say. Check your mindset, it works like that. That's how much we are standing like this. Please, please, please like what I'm wearing. And then it goes from what I'm wearing to who I am, to how I'm living, to how I'm working. We need public approval for everything. And then I love the people who say, you're looking very pretty. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Finally, I know I chose the right dress because people said it's nice. And then suppose someone walks in and says, what are you wearing? <laughs> Does that happen? Will my mind shift? Yes, because the pendulum went this side and so when I get a different opinion, the pendulum is going to go this side. Now when somebody criticizes my dress, the first thing that happens is I start doubting my choice first. See how the mind will work. And I start immediately looking at my dress and I look for a mirror just to check, am I not looking right? How could they say this is not looking nice? Then I go to another friend and I seek endorsement and I say, how do you think I'm looking in this dress? And the person says, you're looking very nice. <laughs> and then I start talking about them and I say, do you know what she said that I'm not looking nice? And then that person is going to say, forget her, she's wearing a white sari. What does she even know? What color clothes look nice? It feels so good when somebody else says, oh, the other person was wrong. I am right, my dress is right. It was the other person who criticized me was wrong. Vicious cycle of creating pain, radiating pain, talking about pain, circulating pain. In a world where we need to be kind about each other. Is it necessary that people need to like my dress? Very good. Is it necessary that people need to like me? <laughs> Is it necessary that people need to like my dress? No. Why do people not need to like my dress? Because as long as I like it, very good. So if I choose to wear something which no one in the world likes, is it okay? Perfect. So are you ready that the whole world is standing on another side and you're standing alone in your pretty dress and the world says it's horrible and I say it's fine, it was not meant for you, I bought it for myself. So I need only one person to like my dress, me, myself. Life is simple. Will you be able to do this now for your every dress? Good. And for everything else you buy in your life, I need to like it. It needs to be comfortable for me. It should be what I need. Just this simple thinking will shift your life to simplicity. If we want to lead a life of simplicity, all that we need to do is keep the criteria of choice of only one person, me, myself. The rest of the wardrobe is for people. How can I wear this same dress? I just wore it three months back at the same party and those photos are still on social media and if they see it and then... 
very, very, very long story. So all this doesn't allow us to live a life of simplicity. And the scientists of the world today are saying, if you want to save your planet, shift to a life of simplicity. But I cannot shift to a life of simplicity until I change my thinking. It will not happen. So now I'm fine with the choice of my dress. Two, am I ready to take decisions in life? which I believe is the right way of living, the ethical way of working and living, if I'm standing alone and the rest of the world on the other side. Ah, very good. The whole world cannot be wrong. When I came first time to the Brahma Kumaris, there was not a single friend of mine who approved of my decision. Nobody. Not a single one. And I'm saying this on television, and wherever they are, they're going to hear this today. Yeah, and it's okay. And leave alone approving of it, they had a lot to say about it. They had a lot to say about it. And I don't believe that they were wrong. It was their choice. But if that day I would have got affected by what they had to say about me, today I would not be who I am. I would not be doing what I am doing. I would not be sitting here today had I listened to what my friends were saying that day. So even if everyone is on one side, they are right. We are not saying they are wrong. But what is right for them need not be right for me. So my definition of right and wrong is only going to be checked by me. So no problem with them, but that doesn't mean I'm going to succumb to their definition of right and shift and go there. If everyone is going to say eating this is right, I have to check whether it's right for me. If everyone in my college and school is going to say drinking this is right, I have to need and check. Is this right for me? If I don't, and I just believe just because everyone is saying it, it's right, then I might take decisions which may be right for them, but may not be right for me. A powerful soul a powerful soul will have the strength to stand alone. Strength to stand alone. Taking responsibility for our decision, not aware what the consequence of the decision may be. The day I chose to come here, it's not necessary 10 years down the line I would be happy with my decision. Maybe I regret my decision later on. But it doesn't matter. It was my decision. It's my decision, I chose my decision, I am responsible for my decision, I am responsible for the consequence of my decision. But if I do something because people said it to me, one, I don't use my own conscience to check what is right for me, tomorrow if the consequences are not favorable, my finger immediately goes says, I did this because of you. And I live a life of a victim. Victim, blaming people for my life. So every decision has to be approved by me. We are not living in times where what the majority believes is always right. A right is a right even if one person is doing it. And a wrong is a wrong even if Everyone is doing it. Everyone. So let's not keep that as the criteria for checking what is right, what is wrong for me. I have to check what is healthy for my mind, for the soul, for my body, for my family, for my relationships. Because if I get into this habit of living by peer pressure, then I try to impose that even on my family. My child wants to make a decision and I'm going to say, but what will people say? People will not come to be with me when I face the consequences of my decision, which I took thinking will be approved by people. 
So I need to be comfortable with my choice. Is it okay if people say I am not nice? Sure? Are you ready to now give the liberty to the world? Say what you want. Let's say it together. Say what you want. Bolye. Now look at those people on your mind and now say it to them. Say what you want. I understand that it's your perspective. I am calm because I did not allow my mind to get affected by their energy. I am calm and when I am calm, even though they've not been nice to me, I'm kind to I'm kind to myself because I am not saying any wrong content to myself even though they've said wrong words to me or about me. We get so disturbed when people don't talk nice things about us and you say, do you know what she was saying about you? Just tell them I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, why should we want to know what everybody is talking about us? Why do we want to know? They're only discussing their perspective about me, their choice. We don't need to hear it because the more we hear all that, the more we are not going to be nice to ourselves. So say what you want, be what you want, do what you want. I understand it's about your state of mind right now. I am calm, I am kind, and when I'm kind, I'm not just kind to myself, I'm going to be kind to them. When we don't get affected by people's opinions or people's criticism, our calm is kindness for them. Because otherwise if I get hurt, I get upset, then all the negative energy I create is going to radiate to it's going to radiate to them. So he comes up, criticizes me. If I create hurt, then my hurt is going to radiate to him because I believe that he is the cause of my pain. He's already in pain and that's why he was criticizing. I create hurt and radiate pain. I add pain to his pain. This is being very, very, very fill in the blank. Adding pain to somebody's pain is being very, very... Now you know what we do every day. We add pains to people's pain because we get hurt with their behavior. Someone is insecure, someone is jealous, they are not going to have anything nice to say about me. But if I get affected, if I get disturbed, if I get hurt, then I radiate pain to their pain and this is not being kind, this is opposite of kind. Opposite of kind. So it's very important to protect ourselves like this and understand that the energies of people around us is about what state of mind they are in. Protect yourself, be calm and be kind to them also then we will not be adding pain, we will be healing their pain. Because we understand them and we say, I understand why you're saying like this. I understand why you feel about me like this. It's okay, I understand, full stop. I don't say, how can you say this about me? No, I understand why you feel like this. It's fine, full stop. You're radiating kindness. You're radiating that peace, love and happiness which every soul around you wants. You're not shifting from your own natural nature of being calm and kind and because you are who you are, you are radiating that to people. So today, we're giving everyone around us the liberty to, to say what they want, do what they want, be what they want. If they want to appreciate us, very good. If they want to criticize us, thank you. You gave me the strength to emerge the power within. We always are very grateful to people who are nice to us. Now, how many thank yous we send to people who are nice to us? Thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you so much. 
more than the people who are nice to us, we should be grateful to the people who are not nice to us. It is those who are not nice to us who become the stimulus for us to emerge the power within. It is they who help us to finish our ego by not being nice to us. So be grateful to them more than what you are to people who are nice to you. It is these tough situations, these people who allow me to bend and 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 the more I bend, the healthy I am. The people who are nice to me, they don't give me the opportunity to bend. Sometimes my ego can go because I just don't bend, everyone's so nice to me. But it's people who are not nice to me, give me the chance to bend and bend and bend and that increases emotional stability. So every day thank them, thank you so much, that itself is healing energy. One is an energy of resistance, how could you do this to me? Other is an energy of gratitude, thank you for doing what you are doing. Had you not done what you did, I would have not used my power to adjust, my power to accept, my power to tolerate. These are all words, but when do we get the opportunity to use these words? Only when there is a stimulus. And they are the stimulus. They are the stimulus and we are grateful to them. They give me the opportunity to build a beautiful relationship with myself where I can be comfortable and kind to myself even if I'm standing all alone. All alone. So be calm means I do not get influenced by the energy of situations and people. Like someone may be unwell but you take care that you don't consume their infection. Because if you consume their infection, then you fall ill and you cannot take care of them. So before taking care of others, we first have to take care of ourselves. The air hostess says, if there's a turbulence, the oxygen mask will fall. Please use the oxygen mask first for your Self. Ever visualized a scene? Your child sitting next to you and you're putting the oxygen mask on yourself and the child is sitting there. Will you be able to do it? Will you be able to do it? Turbulence? Child sitting next to you? Two oxygen masks full and they say put the oxygen mask first on yourself. And you can see your child there getting suffocated. Will we be able to do it? <laughs> then isn't their instruction wrong? They should say first, do it to your children, do it to... No. <laughs> Unless I take care of myself, I'm not equipped to take care of others. Self-care before taking care of others. Self-kindness before being kind to others. Self-love before radiating love to others. Self-respect before radiating respect to others. Self-acceptance before accepting others. Everything has to start with the self. And because we are not building that beautiful relationship with the self, we are losing our capacity to radiate that to others. So oxygen mask first to, first to yourself, first to yourself. So the first step to be calm is protect yourself from the energy of the situation and the people. Be a detached observer, detachment. The word does not give a very comfortable feeling to most of us because we believe detachment means we will become very and that's why people sometimes not very sure whether they want to go towards spirituality and meditation. No, 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 spirituality makes people be very detached. We heard it somewhere. We haven't experienced it. But we believe it's not a nice feeling. Because we believe attachment is very beautiful. Which one is more comfortable, attachment or detachment? Detachment. 
What's true? In the living world, attachment is? Is... Attachment is everything? Everything to me right now. Okay. Give me one minute. No, no, forget this. I'll use the mic. Attachment causes pain? Why? Why? You expect. So then should we shift to detachment? Should we shift towards detachment? Yes. It's hard. I got a daughter now. It's not possible at all. No, we're not saying get detached. We're just thinking about it. <laughs> we're just thinking about it. We're not sure which one is the right one, which one is comfortable for me, and we're no one to say to other people, get detached. We just need to check, what does it feel? Sometimes, two children are born physically joined together. What a beautiful life. Sit together, walk together, sleep together. They can do nothing separately. How much love, na? everything together. Why do they go in for a surgery? Why do they go in for a surgery? So that if one sits, the other one can stand. If one is resting at home, the other one can go to school. Which one is more comfortable? Detachment, physically. Now emotionally. I am attached. Please select one name. Select one name right now. I am attached to. Fill in the blank. No, we don't need to say who they are. You just have to select it. <laughs> just select one name. Now, what is the meaning of I am attached to? Which means my mind is attached to their mind. Now this is not physical attachment, this is emotional attachment. Emotional attachment means their mind is connected to my mind. My mind is dependent on their feelings, their words, their behaviors. I am attached to them. If they are in pain, if they are in pain, I am in pain. Sister, so if your daughter is in pain, then, then I'm in pain. And that's good for her, isn't it? Full stop. It's not. Then what is good for her at that time when she's in pain? And then for that, how would you need to be? To give her happiness, how would you need to be? And which means if she is in pain, you will need to be detached from that pain. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. It's very simple. Don't look at the word and get scared. See what it means. If someone is in pain in my family, the last thing they need right now is more pain. They need ease, they need power, they need love, they need support. And we say, I love you so much, I can feel your pain. And sometimes I'm crying more than them. And even they believe that this is love, so they look at us and say, how sweet, I'm so fortunate to have such a loving family, they're all in pain with me. <laughs> and if someone is detached and calm and stable, everybody looks at them and says, you don't love me? <laughs> don't we say that when we see somebody very calm? Detachment does not mean indifferent. Detachment does not mean I don't care that you are in pain. Detachment means I'm there with you, I'm taking care of you, 
but I'm not going to be experiencing the same pain as you. Because I know that if I create the same pain as you, it's not only I who's going to experience the pain, you are going to receive my pain because I'm attached to you. So surgery. So surgery here. Four members of a family walking down the road, there's a pit, one falls down. The other three look at them and say, I love you so much. <laughs> no. It is when that one falls down that the other three will have to take care that, because only then we can pull them out. Only then we can pull them out. And that's the power of meditation and spirituality. Because when we start taking care of our own mind, energize the soul on a daily basis, our thoughts and feelings are not dependent on people and situations. We are strengthening ourselves every single day. We create the power to be able to be stable even if someone around us is going through a crisis. And every house needs only one like that. So even if three fall into the pit, we need only one outside to pull the remaining three out. Now I need to ask myself, am I ready to be that one? Am I ready to be that one? And which means I'm going to take care of myself because like you said in the beginning, everyone wants peace, love, happiness. Everyone wants it always, but those moments when they are going through, they need it all the more. If someone in your family is going through failure, they need support. If someone is going through an addiction, they need support. If someone is going through a relationship breakdown, they need support. Support does not mean people sitting around them. Support means family and friends creating only and only and only pure and powerful thoughts for them, radiating that vibration to them, helping them to create a powerful thought. The morning class that we did today at the center, at the Brahma Kumaris, we have a daily spiritual class. And that class had a very powerful line this morning which said, powerful soul is a one who does not create waste thoughts a powerful soul is a one who has the power to put an end to the waste thoughts of the other person also. And we've all experienced that. It's not that we haven't experienced that, we've experienced that. We go to somebody with a lot of questions on our mind and we just go and sit in their presence and suddenly our mind becomes still because their still mind has the power to silence our mind. This is power. These are the kind of people we need around us and these are the kind of people we need to be for people around us. This is kindness. This is kindness. People don't need physical support today. People need emotional support. People need emotional support. It's easy to tell a child, don't do this, don't do this, but from where am I going to give my child the strength to be able to not do that? Again, they don't need advice. They need power. Power. We don't need to go and tell somebody, don't drink this. They know it. But they say, I cannot live without this. Now what to do? Now? Now say it every single day. Don't drink, don't drink, don't drink. Is it going to work? No. Worry for them. Is it going to work? No. Cry for them. Is it going to work? No. Fill that vacuum which is there in them. They themselves will leave it. It's that vacuum which needs healing. So our responsibility when we say being kind to people is to give them that emotional strength to heal them just by first taking care of ourselves. So let's shift our vocabulary to attachment. Attachment creates pain. Detachment radiates power. Detachment heals them. Detachment strengthens them. Will it not do that? 
one in a family is going through a depression. The other three people say, how can we be happy when this person in my family is not well? Can you visualize four in a family, one is going through a depression, what does that one need in the environment of the house? What do they need in the environment of the house? Happy, happy energy. The other three people say, how can I be happy when my child is not well? It's not about how can I be happy, it is about I have to be happy to heal my child. I have to. I have to, if I want to do something for them, I will have to radiate that powerful energy to heal them. But then how do I do it? I do it by taking care of myself. Myself. So when I'm calm, I'm untouched by the energy of people and situations because I'm detached, I'm calm. If I'm attached, I'll get pulled into their energy. And if they are disturbed, I am disturbed. So meditation means a daily practice of energizing ourselves, and that makes it very easy to be calm even if there is chaos. When I'm calm, I'm automatically kind. I need to do nothing to be kind. If I'm calm, I'm radiating good, radiating good energy to people. I'm kind. I'm kind. If I radiate good energy to people, what's the energy that flows through me? Pure, powerful energy. It goes to them. What I receive from them in return is blessings. It's blessings. An act of kindness will always receive blessings. Blessings. Just for a few days, make it the purpose of your life to earn blessings daily. We all know how much we need to earn wealth. And every day, like, I've earned this much, now I need this much. Now. All the money in the world cannot buy something. And it's at that time when blessings are needed. You have somebody unwell, all the money in the world cannot treat them. And the doctor says, pray for them. Dua karo. At that time, it's not the money. They need blessings. Blessings is not something that I can create at that time when there is a crisis. Blessings is something I need to earn on the journey of my life every single day. Every single day. The easiest way is to give blessings to people, and which means to give good, pure thoughts and to receive blessings from people. It's going to work automatically. What I give is what I get. So when I'm kind to someone in pain, I radiate blessings to them. And because I radiate blessings to them, I will receive blessings, and my happiness index is going to go on. Simple equation. So being calm radiates kindness, being kind radiates blessings, radiating blessings gets me blessings in return, being happy and contented becomes a natural way of living. I can be rich but not contented. I can have nothing and yet be contented because my inner world has no connection with the outer world. They're two different worlds, the inner world and the outer world. Take care of your outer world, but also start taking care of the inner world. Do not live in an illusion that if I take care of my outer world, my inner world is taken care of. If I work hard and I do well, I will be happy. This is an illusion. I work hard, I do well, I will be happy. Nay, I work hard, very good, I do well, very good, outside world. Outside world, to be happy, I will need to do something in my inside world. My outside world does not radiate to my inside world. It's my inside world which radiates to my outside world. So like we earn money, we need to earn blessings. 30 seconds, close your eyes, see your tomorrow, Tuesday. Scene after scene, many people to meet. Same people which I meet on a daily basis. 
at home, at work, maybe a stranger on the road. Earn blessings from them. Earn blessings. What do I need to do to earn blessings? What do I need to do to earn blessings? Be kind, simple. And if you're going to earn blessings, you're going to be very, very, very rich. Very, very, very rich. Because you're earning blessings. What has happened in the last few years, we shifted the purpose of our life from earning blessings to only earning money. That became the only focus of life. And when that happened, we became rich. When we became rich, we were physically very comfortable. But while doing everything, if we were not earning blessings, we are physically comfortable, emotionally upset. Now I need to do both. Now I need to do both. Do what I'm doing, working, even while working, being kind to everybody around you. And kind not just in words and behavior, kind in my thoughts to them. Understanding that they are going through something. No judgmental thought, no critical thought for them. No questioning their personality and their behavior. How can they do this? Why did they do this? No radiating pain to anybody. I'm being kind, caring, cooperation, blessings. You're going to come home in the evening? Going to come home in the evening? very contented. And when you come home in the evening contented, who's going to receive all that? Family at home. This is a glass of water. Like this. Now I need to keep it like this. It's full. This is my early morning, six o'clock tomorrow. My glass is full. I need to walk through the whole hall, meet people, talk to people, go to the camera at the back, say hello to them, come back here, and come back in the evening on this stage with the glass full. Possible? Do everything that I have to do, not just sit the whole day and say glass full, glass full, nay. I have to do everything that I have to do, take care of people, go to work, do a lot of work, achieve high goals in short times, I have to do everything. But I have to come back in the evening with the glass full. Because when I come back in the evening with the glass full, I have been kind to myself during the day and I have been kind to everyone. Can I come back in the evening with the glass full? Anji? Worth trying, na? Anyone wants to try right now? Acha, how many of you feel that you can do it at least in this hall? Walk around the hall, meet people, say hello to everybody, and then come back after five minutes on the stage with the glass full. Can you do that physically? Can we do that physically? Yes? How many of you believe you can do this? Hanji? While walking, and I have to first climb down in the dark these first four steps here. <laughs> that means my first morning hour itself is very crucial. Some of us have the class half empty in the first hour in the morning nowadays. First thought of the morning sometimes empties my class. Ayyo, late ho gaya, finished, glass empty. <laughs> Which means one wrong thought 
And now that's going to be a series of wrong thoughts after that. Series. Negative and waste thoughts come as a very loving family. They come together. One wrong thought is all that it needs for another hundred thoughts after that. So be very careful about your first thought every morning. Now this glass full is I the soul. I am calm. I am kind. I am happy. I am. Now I only need to take care that during the day, scene after scene, people after people, different behaviors, I work with them, I live with them, but I don't do this. Which means while being with them, working with them, my priority, my priority is my glass. I will walk around here, but my focus will be on this glass. And which means in the whole day tomorrow, my focus has to be on my mind. Can we do that? Can we do that? Doing everything that we're doing, working with everyone, living with everyone, doing everything, but attention. That is being kind to yourself taking care of yourself. But if I don't take care of myself and I'm only doing everything that I am doing, by the end of the day I'm saying stress is natural, anger is natural. Since the last one week that I've come here, I've been hearing depression is becoming natural. Yes. So it's time to start taking care of the self. And which means begin the morning first with filling the glass. First I need to begin the morning with filling the glass. That's where the element of spirituality and meditation on a daily basis comes in. Daily. Do not be unkind to yourself by saying, I do not have time for myself. This is the easiest way of not being nice to yourself. If there is some person in your life and every day you keep saying, I don't have time for you, I don't have time for you, I don't have time for you, I don't have time for you. And when somebody else is mean to you, now you need this one person to be nice to you. That person is going to say, I don't have time for you now today. And that is when our mind is not nice to ourselves because we did not spend time with ourselves every single day to create a beautiful relationship. We only said, I don't have time for you. So if I want my mind to be nice to me, when people are not nice to me, I need to spend time with my mind on a daily basis. I need to be friends with myself. So one line we need to delete today which says, I don't have time. All my time is for taking care of others. We cannot take care of others without taking care of ourselves. So first thing in the morning, and that's what we do at the Brahma Kumaris, centers in 120 countries, millions of people, living with families, working, working 14 hours a day, but one hour every morning for the self. And that one hour radiates calm, kindness and happiness to the remaining 23 hours. And what I have within me, I'm automatically able to give, to give, to give. So that one hour of personal time that is the self-care time. So what we do is we come over to the center, which is the meditation center, the inner space center. We come over to the center and collectively together, it's like a school. It's a study of spirituality. And together we spend an hour studying principles of right thinking, studying principles of right thinking, creating a personal relationship with God, because God is the only one who radiates unconditional love and acceptance to me. And when I receive unconditional love and acceptance, 
I am able to energize myself and radiate the same to others. Unless I get it from somewhere, I will not be able to give it somewhere. For you to give wealth to somebody, you will have to get it. For you to be able to donate blood to somebody, you will need to first create it. So I need to first energize myself, fill myself, then go and be able to give it to people around me. And that's meditation. Raj Yoga meditation means experiencing a very, very personal relationship, a very real relationship. It's not theory. It's a very real relationship. And once we have that one relationship which accepts me always, that's empowerment. That's empowerment. And when I experience that, then I learn the art of being able to do that with others and that may, gives me the strength to empower others. So that's one hour, just one hour on a daily basis. And once we do that, all that we need to do is take care during the day that the glass is, glass is full. If there is any situation in which the mind starts creating a slightly disturbed thought, withdraw from the scene for 30 seconds, sit back, check your mind, change the thought, come back into the scene. Which means one or two negative thoughts, do not allow it to become a series of thoughts. Stop, withdraw, check, change, be nice to yourself, come back into the scene. It's like a baby at home in the cradle. Do all the work, but the priority is the baby in the cradle. So if the baby starts crying, what do we do? If the baby starts crying, one minute withdraw from what you are doing, go up to the baby, come back to work. Where does this baby live? Starts crying, why did they do this to me? Why did they do this to me? Why, why, why? Stop, withdraw, go here, be nice to yourself, say nice things, do this, come back. If we don't do this, the baby could be crying throughout the day and we are busy at work. Can you visualize a scene, a baby crying in the cradle and you're doing your work? But that's what's happening, this baby has been crying. And we just, we have started saying crying is normal. Aren't we saying today crying is normal? What is stress, anxiety, a mind crying? And we said it's okay, everyone is crying. So if you ask somebody, do you create stress? They said, no, everyone gets stressed. So, do you get angry? Ha, huh, everyone gets angry. Nobody says, ha, huh, I get angry. Everyone gets angry, which means all babies are crying, so it's fine. It gives me the justification to be that way. So if the mind starts creating pain, withdraw, withdraw. Keep some nice, nice, uh, spiritual study material to read with you. Read, listen, watch. Upset, take five minutes out. Read, watch, listen, come back. Emotional first aid kit. Emotional first aid kit. Physical first aid kits would be used once in a while. And yet every place has a first aid kit. Emotional first aid kit we might use quite a few times during the day. But if I heal myself immediately, the first minute is very crucial. If I heal myself immediately, I'm back to normal and then I can say being calm, being kind and happy is natural. The word natural needs to be used with care. Which feeling is natural? Do not label the negative emotions as natural. Because if we call them natural, we will do nothing to heal them. We say this is natural. This is not natural, this is a disease. An emotional illness. I need to heal myself and come back to natural. So keep an emotional first aid kit with you. You may need it or sometimes people around you may need it. After every hour, take a minute pause. It's called the traffic control of the mind. 
Just pause, withdraw, check, go to the baby and say, everything okay? How many times in the day we ask people, hello, how are you, take care, everything okay? Do we ask people this? Hello, how are you, everything okay? Take care, very good. Take the one minute, look here inside, hello, how are you, everything okay? Take care, come back. Come back. I need to check, am I okay? Am I okay? Or somebody just walked into the office, said one line to me, I started crying, they've walked away, I'm busy on the computer and my mind is crying. And then I'm always short of time. It's not about time, it's about our thoughts. If we create waste thoughts, we will always be short of time. And that's why one common emotion today in the world is, I am busy, I have no time. It's because we're creating a lot of negative and waste thoughts. We're always short of time. So there's no, nothing as time management. It's all about managing the mind. So after every one hour, take that minute, pause, stop, check. Before going to sleep, again a few minutes with ourself. Check the day. Was there anything for whom I did not create the right thoughts? It's time I can do it now before going to sleep. Do not go to sleep with an emotional wound. By the time you wake up, that wound will not be on the conscious layer of the mind, it will go into the subconscious layer of the mind. Do not sleep with emotional wounds. Do not sleep with a questioning mind. Do not sleep with a troubled mind. Be with yourself. The last hour of the mo night before going to sleep is not the time to watch troubled world news. It's not the time to watch a crime-based serial. It's really not. Be kind to yourself. What am I giving the mind just before it has to go into deep silence and stillness? Be kind to yourself. What do you feed yourself in the night before going to sleep? And what do you feed yourself when you wake up first thing in the morning? If you love someone, you feed them the right diet. So do that for yourself. An hour in the morning, a minute after every hour, and the last 20-30 minutes. Restrict use of technology. Technology was meant to make our life comfortable, not taken care of. Technology overpowers us. We need to control technology, not technology controls us. The day technology starts controlling us, the object which was supposed to be for our comfort starts causing us discomfort now. So the problem is not with the technology, the problem is with the way I use that technology. <laughs> Didn't the phone have a sweet way of saying, I agree? What a perfect timing of that music. I agree, it's not me who is the problem, it's you who doesn't know how to use me. Yeah. You know when the flight lands at the airport, it's that time to see what victims we have become of technology. The air hostess says, Wait, please don't switch on your phone, please wait. It is those moments that we should practice this. Ten minutes more I will not switch on my phone. Three hours, five hours, eight hours, ten hours we were in the flight, the phone was switched off. What will happen in ten minutes more? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, but it increases willpower. So we need to create these self-discipline practices by which we increase willpower. I will use my phone when I need to use my phone. The way I need to use my phone. 
the way which is comfortable to me. I use my phone, my phone does not pull me. Because the day the phone starts pulling me, then being calm becomes difficult because I have become attached to my phone. Attachment is not only to people. Attachment is not only to people. <laughs> Attachment is to objects. Attachment is to our own ideas. Anything which creates a disturbance on my mind, I am attached to that. So take care of technology. Use it and create your own self-discipline methods. No using phone first thing in the morning, willpower. Just before going to sleep, willpower. Restrict the time of office emails and messages and phone calls. Make a genuine effort of not calling up people about work when they are at home. Keep that only for the day when there is a crisis and a crisis is only once in a while. But a weak mind finds a crisis every day. Email subjects come with urgent, urgent, written in caps lock. This is a weak mind which magnifies every situation. Restrict your time. At this time I am at work, at this time I am home. My mind needs rest. Be nice to yourself. If you keep your mind entangled with work 24 hours, 7 days a week, without the phone, restricted working hours. Sunday, chutti, holiday. Which day is chutti nowadays? Which day is chutti holiday? No chutti. So this mind is not getting a holiday, this mind is not getting rest. Wake up at 2 a.m. and still check, if, is there any email from work? Fall off to sleep, the body falls off to sleep, the mind has got something to think about. So when that mind doesn't get rest, when that mind is not energized on a daily basis, and then we are saying, why is mental health issues on the rise? Only because the mind needs rest, right nutrition and exercise and we have the power to eradicate depression from the world, not keep talking about increased statistics in mental health. So are you ready to give an hour to yourself? Yes? Yes? Are you ready to be the one who is going to stand out of the pit even if all three fall? Yes. And are you ready to say, I take responsibility to empower my family by being kind to myself. Myself. And everything that you do with yourself at home, please remember you're radiating the vibrations to people and unaware family, children, friends will get influenced by those vibrations and there will be a shift in their way of thinking and lifestyle. The easiest way to inspire them to change, be it and influence them with your vibrations. Your city loves the word be. Be only will remove one E from there. And instead of saying B E E, we will say B E B. Fill in the blank. B. Calm. B. Kind. B. Happy. Because that's my nature. Always and with everyone. How many of you have visited the Inner Space Center? So, a huge number has not visited. Next Sunday, today is Monday. Coming Sunday, Sister Jayanti, who is the instrument, the director of all the Brahma Kumaris meditation centers all over UK and Europe, is coming to your city, to the Inner, inner Space Center, and it's going to be a very, very lovely session on the art of Raj Yoga meditation. And so while you are walking out, you're going to get this leaflet, which would have the information about the program and the address of the Inner Space Center. The meditation, the meditation is four sessions, one hour daily 
and the first session of the Raj Yoga meditation course we will be doing this Thursday. This Thursday. Two options of timing. One is 11 in the morning and the second is 6.30 in the evening. Choose one of the two times, either 11 in the morning or 6.30 in the evening, and then we do it four consecutive Thursdays. That's the Raj Yoga meditation course. And Sunday with Sister Jayanti is the Raj Yoga meditation session. Ready to take the four hour course? Are we ready to do the Raj Yoga meditation course? Yes? Four consecutive Thursdays, one hour daily, that's all. And the most beautiful thing is, there's never a cost attached to it. Nothing can be simpler than this. One, it comes free of cost. Second, I can walk into the center and start doing it any day, any time I like. Sisters and brothers are always there to share it with us. All that I need to do is take out that Take out that one hour. Please take out that one hour. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself and take out that one hour. So starting this Thursday, four consecutive Thursdays and Sunday. It's a very beautiful center, the inner space. It has a very nice quiet room, a meditation room where very nice concept which I heard this morning is people walk in at lunchtime. They come over there at lunchtime and have a 20 minute meditation at lunchtime every day. Isn't it nice? Halfway during the day, just to walk in and check is the glass full? And so that I can fill it up before I reach home in the evening to my family. We need to come home happy with glass full. Only then will we be able to fill the glasses of our children and family members. Em empower them. So quiet meditation time in the afternoon at inner space. Every day we can just walk in. Go into the room, sit there and the sister will give us a beautiful meditation commentary and fill the glass. So as we walk out, the sisters have prepared for us a prashad, toli, which is a sweet which is prepared in a state of meditation because meditation energizes the, fu the food we cook. And with that, they will share with you the invitation for next Sunday, Sister Jayanti's class and the Raj Yoga meditation course begins this Thursday. This Thursday, two times, 11 a.m., or 6.30 p.m. Let's sit back right now and prepare ourselves thought and feeling. I am the creator. I choose to be kind to everyone always. Kind is who I am. Kind is who I am. In every scene tomorrow, I allow people 
to be their way. I understand they have a reason. I don't seek kindness. I am kind. I am kind in what I say to myself. I am kind in what I think about myself. I am kind in what I think about them. I promise one hour of self-care time daily. It's a personal commitment. I am kind to myself. I choose the right emotional diet. I watch, read, listen, only that which is healthy for me. I am kind to myself. I energize myself with God's love and powers. His power empowers me. I empower others. I am calm, I am kind, I am happy, always. The next 15 minutes as we drive home will be my time in silence. Next 15 minutes in silence, using this time to check, change my thoughts about myself and about people. I'm kind always. Next 15 minutes for myself. Thursday, one hour, I start learning meditation. I'm kind to myself. I need nothing 
from people around me. First three rows will start moving in silence. First three rows and last three rows. In silence, light, easy. First three rows in the gallery. Next three rows, next three rows, Next three rows. In silence. Next three rows. Next three rows. 